Hi, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part seven of Web Forms, and this video covers CRM fields. And uh, so the first thing we should probably talk about is what CRM fields actually are. And for many uh, purposes, they look and act a lot like custom fields added to a form. So you can define labels and data types and list options for them. Uh, but they do have some things uh, different from uh, a custom field. So a regular custom field, like we saw in one of the other videos, is always attached to a case record. And they are specific to each form. So even if you create multiple forms and put the custom fields on there that have the same form name and options they are stored as separate records in the back end of the database and you can't really update the values in custom fields as you've seen when you submit a form again uh, a new case record is created so old data in case records are not updated CRM fields, on the other hand, uh, can actually solve a couple different problems. For one, you can attach them to a case record, a contact record, or an order record. And so uh, when you're attaching them to a contact record, uh, you can put the CRM form fields uh, on your regular old form, but they will essentially be a custom field that has been directly stored with a contact record and so uh, subsequent form submissions will update the data on those. Uh, in the situation where you're going to attach a CRM form to a case as opposed to a contact, uh, the main advantage there is that you can reuse the same form fields across multiple cases. Uh, oftentimes you may want to have two or three fields that interact with each other using JavaScript and it could be the case that you want to include that same uh, group of fields on multiple forms for whatever reason and instead of having to rewrite the JavaScript and update all the different form IDs or the form field IDs uh, specific to each form you can use the same uh, snippet basically and uh, do that just once. Um, there's some you can really do some interesting things with CRM forms uh, they're particularly useful on membership sites when you need to track information about your users across a lot of different parts of the system uh, we make uh, use of them quite a bit on bcgurus.com. Um, but yeah, they can be shared across uh, forms and reused. And uh, if they're attached to a contact, the, uh, the same uh, form or different forms even can update those data, that data, and they'll act just like uh, contact form fields would, except you define them uh, customly. So CRM form fields are, uh, are actually pretty easy to set up and use. Um, the big idea that you need to get your head around is you define what's called a CRM form, which is separate from a web form that we've been working with. But you create a CRM form and add uh, the individual fields that you desire to that form. And then you place the CRM form onto a standard web form. And that's kind of what these uh, images are demonstrating. But we'll jump right into Business Catalyst and actually show this to you and uh, hopefully it'll make some more sense. So as I said, the first step in using CRM form fields is to define the CRM form itself and that's where we're at right now. We're in CRM and extend CRM database and this is where you can see a list of the different CRM forms you've created and we don't have any so uh, that's what this message indicates. So we'll click add CRM form and this will ask us uh, basically to provide a name and we'll just call this uh, test uh, CRM information. And we'll go ahead and click next. And that's going to take us to uh, step two of this process, which is where we actually define the fields that we want to include on this form. And so we'll just click add field and uh, kind of similar to the web builder interface, uh, different UI, but same concepts. You need to define a field name. So we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this custom field one. And we'll make this a text string. Again, this is just a drop down, but it's the same options pretty much as what we had on the uh, the real custom fields in web form. So we'll select that. And again, you've got the choice whether or not to make these fields mandatory or not. So we'll just do that and click save field. Uh, the asterisk over here indicates that that's the mandatory field. Uh, so that's what that looks like. We'll click add field to do uh, one more and we'll call this one custom field two. And this time we'll create uh, 
let's say a uh, drop down list with a couple options in it. Now for this interface, if you're defining options for some type of a list, uh, you're just going to separate each option with a comma. So we can do item one, item two, and uh, we'll go ahead and do item three, and we'll leave this one as a non-mandatory, and you can see it lacks the asterisk right there. Now the next step is to define uh, the defaults for this form, so we'll just go ahead and apply this to contacts by defaults, but you can see that these are checkboxes, so you can extend uh, other types of records as well, and uh, this really isn't even all that necessary. Uh, you can still choose these on an individual form basis uh, without making any selections, but if you put a checkbox on here, the at least the record data will be added to every record uh, regardless of whether or not the customer actually fills the form out or not. So we'll go ahead and say contacts for this one because that's the easiest one to explain. And uh, so that at that point we now have our, uh, our first CRM form created. Now the next step is to come into our web form interface and actually add this to one of our forms. So we'll load up our uh, trusty test war web form here and uh, we'll go ahead and remove the email marketing list that we're not using anymore and to get to your CRM form fields you're just going to navigate to the CRM form tab and each of the different forms you've defined will show up here we've only got one right now but we can see it so you just click it and as you can see it um, it adds these uh, the fields as appropriate now there's no option here to change the mandatory option because that's always set in the uh, CRM form build itself. So all we need to do is add that field and click save. And uh, next thing we need to do is come back to our test page and make sure we've got the form inserted correctly. And I've gone ahead and already switched this over so that the form is inserted as a module. And uh, that just makes it real easy to come back to our test page. We can reload and you can see the fields uh, have been added as we uh, as appropriate and you can see our different list items here and uh, the custom field this one is uh, mandatory this one's not you get validation on these things because custom one is mandatory that shows up in our uh, validation but custom field two is optional so that one's uh, missing there's no problems there so let's go ahead and fill this out and see what the records look like on the back end so we've got our form filled in. We'll just go ahead and click submit. And as you can see, even the auto or even the thank you page has the uh, has the details. So uh, CRM forms are really fully functional. There's really no uh, reason not to use them if you've got a use case for them. Now uh, let's go back to the CRM itself and take a look at the. So I'll switch over to that tab. And again, we're just on the contact details page for my record since I filled the form out. And if you scroll down, you can see the test CRM information, which was the name of the CRM form. Uh, but that information has been added to the contact record and we've got our form with the labels and the filled in data here. And uh, again, the real advantage to using CRM form fields is that uh, they can be used to update a single field just like this. So we can switch that to item two and uh, we'll need to come back and reload the customer to see those changes. But uh, now, as you can see, we've updated the, the data in custom field one to show test data two. And if we had just used a plain old uh, custom field without using CRM forms, we would have gotten a, a case record. Now, there's always going to be a case record for each of the form submissions. So that's why there's three in here. We've been testing this. But if we take a look at the, uh, the most recent one, uh, we're not going to have anything down here. Uh, that relates to the fields and that's because on the form itself all we had was uh, the basic contact information and we had these custom fields. Uh, normally if we had added these as custom fields the uh, the case data itself we can get back there it would have included those form submission details uh, somewhere down here but because those are CRM forms uh, they are attached to the contact itself and uh, the data will be updated on uh, subsequent form submissions.